Good morning. It is 5 a.m. Thursday here in Manila. I'm Rain Musni with your first look at the news. The Philippine economy grows 7.1% in the third quarter, the fastest among Southeast Asian nations. The growth is primarily attributed to the strong performance of construction and services. The peso closes in the 40 to the dollar range for the second day, its highest in more than four years. It is up 7% this year, making it the best performer in Asia. It's a mixed blessing as families get fewer pesos for every dollar sent home by overseas Filipino workers. Exporters are also affected. The surprising 7.1% third quarter GDP growth boosted Philippine shares, allowing them to buck a regional downtrend on global growth concerns due to the euro debt crisis and the U.S. fiscal cliff. Well, Democratic U.S. President Barack Obama hopes for a deficit reduction framework by Christmas. His optimistic statement comes as Republicans say they are committed to working with the president to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff. But they maintain that increasing taxes on the top 2% of wage earners would be a mistake. U.S. and European stocks rebound to post gains Wednesday as investors shifted to buying modes after positive news on U.S. federal budget talks. The Dow, Standard & Poor's and Nasdaq all posted gains of about half a percent. European markets traded between a fifth to about a third of a percent higher. The Philippines will no longer stamp its visa on China's new electronic passport, which is a map of disputed territories. The Foreign Affairs Department says it does not want Manila to be seen as legitimizing the map every time a Philippine visa is stamped on the e-passports. Instead, visas will be stamped on a separate visa application form. Senators pass on third and final reading next year's proposed budget of more than 2 trillion pesos with a vote of 14 to 1. Only Senator Joker Arroyo voted against it. The Education Department will get the lion's share to help boost its K-12 program, followed by the Public Works and Highways and National Defense. Senators expect President Aquino to sign the budget by December 20th. The Commission on Elections stops 30 more partyless groups from running in next year's polls. Among those groups disqualified had nominated family members of House Representatives and a Supreme Court Justice. The Japanese firm with a license to operate at Pagcourse Entertainment City admits their company wired $15 million to Rodolfo Soriano, a consultant of former Pagcourse chief Ephraim Henuino. But a lawmaker doubts casino executive Kazuo Okada's bribery claims, saying there's no proof of it. Meantime, authorities are investigating the alleged links of investment firm Amman Futures to terrorism. Multiple agencies are now trying to see whether some of the money invested with Amman Futures were funneled to alleged terrorists. The mayor of Pagadian City insists he has no involvement with, with Amman Futures, a company accused of duping investors of billions of pesos. But the National Bureau of Investigation sued him, his wife and ten others just the same, for large-scale estafa. Koko Rasuman will remain under NBI custody in Manila for his own safety. Rasuman has been getting numerous threats from investors of his failed multi-million peso double your money scheme. Justice Secretary Leila de Lima says there may be more money involved in the Rasuman case than in the alleged Aman Futures investment scam. Justice Secretary Leila de Lima hit back at the Court of Appeals, saying she did nothing wrong when she created a new panel to probe Ortega's killing. In sports, the Philippine national women's football team, the Malditas, win the L.A. Vikings Cup after defeating the California Cosmos Tuesday. A look at the penumbral lunar eclipse that was visible over Manila Wednesday night. Pagasa says the shaded outer region of a shadow is of the moon passing through the faint penumbral portion of the Earth's shadow. 